everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to sketch a polynomial function. So let's take a look at our example here. We have f of x equals 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And we want to sketch a picture of what we think this polynomial might look like. So we can probably figure out some information given what we have here. Something that I can definitely figure out are the zeros. So if I want to find the zeros of this polynomial, I'm just going to set the whole function equal to zero. And then maybe I can get sort of a good idea about where the graph is going to cross the x-axis, because we know that that's always really important. So if I want to solve this equation, I'm just going to divide everything by 3 to get rid of that coefficient there. Okay, and 0 divided by 3 is 0, so I'm going to get 0 equals x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Now, since I have these three factors that equal to zero, I'm going to get three zeros, one for every factor. Okay, so given these little equations, I have that my zeros are negative four, one, and three. Okay, now what else do you think I'd be able to find out? I think that finding the y-intercept is probably a good idea as well. That's very easy to do. If I want to find the y-intercept, all I have to do here is actually plug in 0 or substitute 0 in for x. Okay, so I will get something here. f of 0 is going to give me 3 times 4 times negative 1 times negative 3. That means that my y-intercept is 0, 36. Okay, now I have information about where the graph crosses the x-axis, and I have information about what happens when x is 0. So I'm going to use this method of finding out what kinds of y values exist between the zeros. Do I have positive y values or do I have negative y values? That's going to help me because that will tell me whether or not my graph is going to be above or below the x-axis. So I'm going to draw what we call an f of x number line. I'm going to label it, and the reason that I'm putting that x on the bottom is that on this number line, I'm going to place the zeros, because what I'm doing here is I'm going to figure out what kinds of y values I have in between the zeros, positive or negative, meaning is the curve above or below the x-axis. We know that the curve is going to be on the x-axis at negative 4, 1, and 3, because those are the zeros. So, this f of x number line will determine the kinds of y values, either positive or negative. Determine the y values, positive or negative. So, I know that I can already put a sign on here because I figured out that the y-intercept was a positive number. Now, where do you think I'm going to put that plus sign? Where? is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where x is 0. On this number line, given the zeros, x is 0 in between negative 4 and positive 1. So I'm just going to put a little plus sign here because that will tell me that in between negative 4 and 1, my curve should be above the x-axis. So I was able to figure that out because I just substituted in a number that was between those two. So we'll do that again. Let's say that I want to figure out what kinds of y values are going to be in this interval from negative infinity to negative 4. Well, let's pick a number that's less than negative 4. How about negative 5? We're going to substitute that in to our function to see what kind of y values we get. So let's see. 3 is positive, so I'm going to put a plus. Negative 5 plus 4 that gives me a negative number. Negative 5 minus 1, that gives me a negative number. Negative 5 minus 3, that also gives me a negative number. Remember, I don't care what the number is, I just want to know if it's positive or negative. So in this case, I have a positive times 3 negatives. That's going to give me a negative number. Okay, let's try it again for this interval between 1 and 3. Let's pick 2. We could pick anything. We could have picked 1 and a half, 2 and a half, anything you want, but 2 is easiest. 
So I'll have a positive sign for the 3. 2 plus 4 is positive. 2 minus 1 is positive. 2 minus 3 is negative. So I have 3 positive times a negative. It's going to give me a negative. Okay, one last time. Let's plug in a number between 3 and infinity. Let's just try 4. We're going to substitute that in. We have a positive for the 3. 4 plus 4 is positive. 4 minus 1 is positive. And 4 minus 3 is positive. So if I have 4 positive numbers multiplied together, that's going to give me a positive. So what I've done here is I've now displayed the kind of y values that are supposed to exist on my function, right? From negative infinity to negative 4, I have negative y values. From negative 4 to 1, I have positive y values. From 1 to 3, I have negative y values. And from 3 to infinity, I have positive y values. So now the big question is, well, what does this look like if I were to graph it? So let's just do a quick sketch. Okay, now remember, I'm not going to even label the y-axis because I don't really know what the values of all these points are, right? I'm just sketching to see positive or negative. I can label my x-axis, though, because I know what the zeros are. Okay, so there are my zeros, negative 4, 1, and 3. I'm below the x-axis, then above, then below, then above. I have to hit each zero as well. So I'm below the x-axis, then above, got to come back down to hit the 1, then below, come back up to hit the 3, and then above. And there's the sketch of this cubic function. There's the sketch of 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. Now, there's a couple of questions we now have to ask ourselves. What's the end behavior of this graph? Now, when I ask about end behavior, I'm asking, what is the graph doing towards the ends? The ends being when x goes towards infinity and when x goes towards negative infinity. So, in other words, as x gets really, 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 really big or really, 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 really small, what is the graph doing at those places? So, we know that this is infinity here for x, negative infinity for x. Here's infinity on the y-axis, negative infinity on the y-axis. So as x goes this way towards infinity, what is y doing? And as x goes this way towards negative infinity, what is y doing? So we're going to write this answer in some kind of a sentence. So we're going to say, as x approaches infinity, f of x is going towards infinity, right? It is going up. So as x gets big, f of x also gets big. Okay? So we ask the same thing again for negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, So as the x's get small this way, where's y going? f of x also gets small, so f of x also approaches negative infinity, okay? And behavior is going to become very important for us, so it's something you need to pay close attention to. Okay, let's try another example here. All right, so now if we take a look at this, it looks a little bit different. I've got three factors, but one of them is squared. So you might have kind of an idea of what this might look like, but let's start with finding the zeros again. Now I'm going to rewrite this so that all my factors are written out. I have 2x minus 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 5 times x minus 5. So I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe this is quartic, right? Because this has four factors. So maybe it's going to look like a quartic function. So let's find the zeros. I'm going to set the whole function equal to 0, and then we're going to set our factors equal to 0. I only need to set x minus 5 equal to 0 once, because I know that I'll get the same answer both times. So my zeros in this case are 1 half comma 0, negative 3 comma 0, and 5 comma 0. OK, 
Okay. Um, what is the y-intercept? Let's find that. Okay. So let's see. This is going to be negative 1 times 3 times 25. Right, which gives me negative 75. So my y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 75. So let's make our f of x number line. Let's figure out what kinds of y values we're going to have here. Now I'm only going to be putting three zeros on here, even though one of them occurs twice. It's the same one, so I'm going to put three zeros on here. Let's go in order. We'll have negative 3, 1 half, and 5, right? They've got to go in order from smallest to biggest. I can already place a sign here because I figured out the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative, right, negative 75. That exists between negative 3 and 1 half, so I'm going to put the negative right here, okay? So let's start over the far left. Of course, you can start anywhere you want, but it's just easier to go left to right. So let's pick a number inside here. Let's substitute in maybe negative 4. So if I plug that in, let's see, I'm going to get, if I plug negative 4 into the first factor, I'm going to get a negative into the second factor, I'm going to get a negative. If I plug negative 4 into the third factor, I'll get a negative, but then I'm going to square it. So that's a positive. Remember, anything squared is always positive. Okay, so that's going to give me a plus sign up here. Okay, let's plug something in between 1 half and 5. Maybe let's say 1. We're going to substitute. Plug 1 into the first factor, we'll get a positive. 1 into the second factor gives us a positive, and 1 into the third factor squared will also give us a positive. Let's put a plus sign. One last time, we'll plug in something here, 6, we'll substitute in. We're going to get a positive times a positive times a positive again, which gives me a positive. So this sketch looks a little interesting, right, because these signs are not alternating like they were before. So when I sketch this, I'm going to be above the x-axis, then below, then above and above again, but I still have to hit all three of those zeros. So let's see. Here's negative 3. Here's a half. Here's 5. So let's see. Above, cross through, below, have to hit the one half. I've got to stay above at the five, but I have to hit it, so I'm just going to kind of bounce right off of it. And there we go. Above, below, above, above. Remember that hitting the zeros is very important, right? Because the y value at those points is zero. Looks great. So now we have to ask ourselves the end behavior. So Here's when x is infinity, negative infinity, y infinity, negative infinity. So the question is, as x goes this way or gets very big, where does y go? And as x goes this way and gets very small, where does y go? Okay, so our sentence here, as x approaches infinity, where is f of x going? f of x approaches infinity as well. What about the other direction? As x approaches negative infinity, y or f of x approaches infinity. So as x gets big, y gets big, and as x gets small, y gets big as well. Okay, everyone, good luck. We're going to do a lot of discovery in class about different kinds of end behavior and different kinds of polynomial functions. Good luck, everybody.